with today being Mother's Day, I've decided to review an episode from We Bear Bears Season 4 Mom Map after watching the episode for the first time. It was bizarre even to this day, and yet it's still clever for how it's executed. The episode centers around the Bears downloading the Mom, mom App after watching the commercial of it during a basketball game. And this leads to them getting three moms at a time, each of which embarrass them, almost separating them, similar to the movie, and mainly one who bullies them when it comes to exercise. The bizarre nature is mainly the fact that the mom map itself has different personality mothers, that there's even a mother who is a sword mother. I'm not making this up. When there's a mother with different attributes other than the most notable mothers, it really says something of how the mom map is bizarre and clever at the same time. And the most bizarre thing when it came to the mom map is that when they cancel their current mother, they disappear. Not by magic, not by a transition, they just disappear the moment they press the cancel button. This really feels a lot more awkward than it should be, but it's honestly done correctly for the bizarre nature of the mom map itself. They made the logic in this show really clever in a way that really makes it weird to understand, but not difficult when it came to how it's executed. Like, the fact that the Bears can actually cancel the moms and the moms just disappear like nothing happened really sums up the nature. If a real person did this, then I'm pretty sure they will have more questions, but the Bears will only think about having a mother that supports them completely. And since that the first mother was too supportive, which them leading to the following mother that is a lot more strict, which leads to a following mother who is really buff. The three mothers in this episode, Gail, Linda, and Tank, are the examples of how the Bales' experiences without a mother really suits their characters when it comes to them being together. Granted, in the Baby Bales spinoff, I actually wanted to see Panda's parents as real parents rather than the other characters being being in disguises, but after thinking about it more, it kind of sums up of how the Bears' development on being together while not understanding the origins of the parents really gave me an understanding of how that in some occasions they are born differently, knowing full well that most Bears, despite the cub years that they've grown up, have different lifestyles. Granted, I'm not an expert on Bales, but for how this show has executed Grizz, Panda, and Ice Bell, their solo Baby Bear episodes really came from the lifestyle that is just difficult to attach them, knowing for a while that in one episode involving Panda as well, he is talking to another panda that is a stuffed animal or toy. I did talk about the Ice Bell episode three years ago, but when it comes to Grizz, who was introduced when it comes to the Boito episode, the other baby episode was him being part of a sitcom. So, I'm assuming that the origins of Grizz and Panda are mainly in a facility where they couldn't be able to figure out their origins and not realizing their memories that they've lost involving the mothers. Which really made me feel like that this episode's intention is to have them experience to have them experience what mothers are like when it comes to them looking after them. The final mother tank who Ice Bear picked, even though that she acts like a bully for how it's executed, it's not on the same levels as bowling emotionally. Because for how this mother is developed when it comes to exercise and putting the bells into exercise work, 
this is way worse in comparison to the other mothers. When Ice Bell just wanted a strong mother, considering that he is the strongest out of all the three bears. But to tell you the truth, this predicament that the bears got themselves into is honestly the most humorous, knowing full well of how over the top Tank is when it comes to him. Just being stronger and just having the entire cave her own way by making it her own home. Which, in all honesty, for how the mom, the mom app operates, it can do a lot of crazy things. Like, Gail just threw a party, Linda was preparing to separate the bells, all the while changing Panda by making sacrifices, and now we have this mother who sleeps while walking out. I have to say, out of all the moms that the Bears picked, Gail was the better out of the three, and if any of you saw Chapter 2 of my fanfic ween of my Cantata fanfic of Rebel Bears, it really shows, but I'm gonna describe it now. Okay, the biggest problem the Bears have with Gail is that she's too supportive to the extremes of embarrassing the Bears in front of the college, people that she threw a party of. She embarrassed Grizz by having them wear a big boy thing, you know, something that you eat during food time, either breakfast, lunch, or dinner. She embarrassed Panda by showing pictures of his drawings that are way more privately in Panda's perspective. And finally, she notices that I Spell plays violin but privately, and this leads to a breakdown of Ice Bell embarrassing himself since that he's bad at playing violin. And if you want to know onto why I didn't want him to play violin because he given up on that in my fanfic is mainly the fact that he's just not the best when it comes to playing these types of instruments. It made me feel like that his sensitivity is a lot more over the top the more I watch these episodes and Ice Bear's appearances. Because let me be real with you, the fact that he has a private bathroom in Season 2 really sums up a lot that he is highly sensitive. But despite all that, my statement of these characters being memorable, I found Gale as the most memorable one and I'm gonna have her play an important role in my Canada fanfic once I get to the chapters of using her again. Because every time I look at Gale in this, she is fun to watch, not to mention that even though that she did embarrass the Bells, at the very least it really feels like it's a way of just showcasing on how she is better than the other mothers by not being too strict or too power hungry when it comes to taking control of the entire house. Because let me just say that she didn't control the house when she was throwing a party for the bears. For how the ending is structured when it comes to the bears calling Tank's mother in order to end the madness, it really sums up of how them not having the mother is honestly for the best for how they see the true nature of mothers behind closed doors when it comes to their families. If we actually had parents of Ice Bell, Panta, or Grizz, then I'm pretty sure that the setting would have been a lot more different knowing full well that more bears is probably saved for the movie for a uh, unexpected reveal towards the end of that film. As far as I'm concerned, thinking about the We Bear Bears movie and reviewing that movie before I watch the whole series, there's a slight chance I might revisit it, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So, this episode, Mom Map, is bizarre, but I enjoy it for that reason alone. And to celebrate Mother's Day, knowing full well that this is the only way I'm going to be celebrating Mother's Day, judging of how my schedule has been resurfaced after doing the Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon. But a lot of unexpected things happen, mainly the fact that if you don't have a lot in the way. Just one more review of Rebel Bears before Steven Universe Marathon arrives. 
I'm giving this episode a 7.5 out of 10 and happy Mother's Day.